there is a dramatic twist in the scriptures, which remains a mystery to many. It is a twist wherein humanity is deprived of something unique. We are talking about a large chunk of knowledge of the cosmos and celestial beings, alongside rugged predictions about historical events and a peek into the afterlife, all withheld in the banned Book of Enoch. That book is in view today, and so many mysteries are unraveled. What can we learn from this book? How does its content affect the world today? Why was it banned in the first place? Keep watching as we explore nothing but answers to questions surrounding the secret inside the Book of Enoch. If you know the biblical story of the beginning, you will probably know Adam, the first man to walk the earth. As it turns out, Adam had a great-great-great-great-grandson from the fourth generation called Enoch, one of the most interesting biblical figures you will ever find. Now, we must say that Enoch is a figure mentioned in various religious and mythological texts. However, he is most well known in the Bible. Here, the Hebrew Bible and some Christian traditions also describe Enoch as the great-grandfather of Noah, the only man who survived the flood with his family. According to the book of Genesis 5, 18, 24, Enoch walked with God and was taken by God into heaven, so he did not experience death. This was, however, after living for about 365 years on the earth. You could imagine how peculiar it would be to live for that long and eventually not taste death, but that is not the most interesting part. One would think that Enoch being caught up and taken into heaven would probably be the end for Enoch, but that is not the case at all. Rather, this was only the beginning of a series of adventures much for the faint of heart to bear. It happened that after God took Enoch, he received various revelations about the mysteries of creation, the workings of the universe, and the destiny of humanity. Following this, he documented most of his experiences in writing, thus making possible the existence of the apocryphal or pseudepigraphical work called the Book of Enoch. Enoch did not put the Book of Enoch together, but the book, also known as One Enoch, is a collection of the ancient Jewish religious writings attributed to Enoch. Here, the Book of Enoch expands on Enoch's story and attributes various prophecies and teachings to him, most of which will leave you awestruck with the enormous knowledge it bears. But what mystery does the Book of Enoch unravel? Enoch's journey to the heavenly realms is now described as a mystical and transcendent experience. He is taken up into the heavens by divine forces, often portrayed as angels or messengers of God. This ascent marks a departure from the earthly realm and an entry into the celestial realm, symbolizing the separation between the human and divine spheres. Enoch encounters a diverse array of angelic beings during his journey, each with specific roles and functions. These include archangels, seraphim, cherubim, and other celestial entities. Enoch interacts with these beings, learns their names, and gains insights into their duties and responsibilities in the divine order. These encounters with angels in the heavenly visions underscore the concept of a hierarchical divine order. Here, angels are depicted as intermediaries between God and humanity, each with a specific role in carrying out God's will. This hierarchical structure reflects the idea that the divine realm is organized and governed by a divine hierarchy. At the pinnacle of the hierarchy is the divine figure, God, the creator and ruler of the universe. God is not described as an angel, but as the ultimate source of all existence and authority. From here, Enoch introduces us to the seraphims and cherubims. These angelic beings are often associated with the closest proximity to God's presence. Seraphim are depicted as fiery, six-winged creatures who continuously praise and worship God. At the same time, cherubim are guardians of divine knowledge and may be stationed near the divine throne. We also have the archangels, high-ranking angels who serve as messengers and agents of God's will. They have important roles in delivering divine messages, overseeing cosmic events, and executing divine judgments. Archangels in the Book of Enoch include Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Uriel. What's more, the Ophanim and Wheels CES next. These are angelic beings associated with divine chariots and heavenly thrones, they play a role in the celestial machinery of God's rule and are closely linked to God's presence. Enoch also makes mention of principalities, powers, and rulers. These angelic orders are responsible for governing various aspects of the universe. Principalities may oversee nations or groups of people. 
At the same time, powers and rulers may have authority over celestial bodies or natural phenomena. Their roles are diverse but contribute to the maintenance of cosmic order. Among the hierarchical order is a group of angels originally sent by God to watch over and guide humanity. They are known as the Watchers, and their primary mission was to observe and protect humans and to ensure they followed the divine plan. However, a significant portion of the Watchers, led by their leader Samyaza, rebelled against their divine mission. They descended to Earth, took human wives, and produced hybrid offspring known as the Nephilim. These were mighty giants who walked the Earth at the time, spreading evil. They also taught forbidden knowledge and skills to humanity, leading to widespread corruption. But since not all the Watchers transgress, the remnants are regarded as the Holy Ones, who remained loyal to God and were not involved in the rebellion of the Watchers. They assist in upholding divine justice and order in the heavens. Here, the subgroup or faction within the Watchers who transgressed are known as the Grigori, and with their descendants the Nephilim roaming the earth, more devastating consequences were brought into view. Here we are talking about the Great Flood. We must note that Enoch's visions of heaven and angels in the Book of Enoch have profound spiritual and mystical significance. They emphasize the potential for human beings to have direct encounters with the divine and to gain knowledge and insight beyond the earthly realm. His journey serves as an example of the transformative power of mystical experiences in religious traditions. But what other experience did Enoch have? The Book of Enoch also narrates his extraordinary adventure through the very depths of the earth and into the mysterious realm of Sheol. Here, Enoch's journey begins as he's shown the secrets of the earth. This isn't just a physical exploration, but a profound spiritual and cosmic experience. He witnesses the foundations of the earth, gaining insights into the structure and essence of the world he once knew. It was as though he was peering into the very building blocks of creation, deepening his understanding of the universe. Enoch encounters natural phenomena that are both awe-inspiring and mystifying as he travels through the earth. He witnessed the forces that govern the elements, the cycles of life and death, and the intricate web of life that sustains the planet. This part of his journey underscores the idea that the earth itself is a manifestation of divine order and purpose. Enoch's journey takes an even more profound turn as he descends into Sheol, the underworld. In various religious and mythological traditions, Sheol is often depicted as a realm where the souls of the deceased reside, awaiting judgment or their ultimate destiny. In Sheol, Enoch becomes a witness to the fate of the wicked and the righteous. This is a powerful moment in his journey, reflecting the concept of divine justice. He may see the consequences of human actions, the rewards for righteousness, and the punishments for wickedness. It vividly portrays the afterlife and the moral order that governs it. Enoch's journey through Sheol is not just a passive observation, but a spiritual revelation. It reinforces the idea that human choices have eternal consequences and that there is a greater purpose and order to exist beyond the physical realm. In the broader context of the Book of Enoch, these experiences contribute to Enoch's role as a visionary and a messenger of divine knowledge. His journey through the earth and Sheol highlights his encounter's mystical and transcendent nature and the profound insights he gains into the mysteries of creation, existence, and divine justice. But it gets more interesting as Enoch's journey into the heavens is like attending an otherworldly astronomy class. But what do we mean by this? As it turns out, Enoch's interactions with angels lead to revelations about the mysteries of creation, the divine plan for humanity, and the workings of the universe. According to the Book of Enoch, he received knowledge about various subjects, including astronomy, astrology, and the measurement of time. Up there, he gained extensive knowledge about celestial bodies, the stars, planets, and the vast cosmos. This wasn't just about identifying constellations, it was a deep understanding of their significance in the grand scheme. His learning of astrology was not in the horoscope sense, but in how the positions of celestial bodies influence human events and destiny. Enoch realized that these celestial movements were part of a divine plan intricately connected to life on Earth. Enoch's journey also brought insights into time. He learned about the divisions of time, days, months, and years, 
and how they sync with celestial movements. This wasn't just about marking dates. It was understanding that time reflects divine order and is cyclical, not linear. This cosmic knowledge sets Enoch apart as a sage in the Book of Enoch. His grasp of astronomy, astrology, and the calendar wasn't just intellectual. It was a profound spiritual insight into the connection between the earthly and heavenly realms. It reminds us that the cosmos is a testament to the divine wisdom that governs all of creation. Following Enoch's wild visions, he goes on to prophecy about a series of things, one of which is about divine judgment. From Enoch's vision of heaven and hell, he sees a time when divine justice will be dispensed upon the world. This isn't just about settling scores, it's about restoring cosmic balance and righteousness. In his visions, Enoch witnesses what will happen to those who have strayed from the path of righteousness, and it's not a pleasant sight. The wicked face the consequences of their actions, and Enoch sees the justice of God being meted out. This part of his revelations serves as a powerful warning against wrongdoing and serves as a reminder that actions have consequences. But Enoch's prophecies go beyond judgment. He also glimpses the final destiny of humanity. He sees a future where righteousness prevails, the faithful are rewarded, and humanity's ultimate purpose is fulfilled. It's a vision of hope, redemption, and the ultimate realization of God's plan for creation. Enoch doesn't keep these revelations to himself. Instead, he becomes a messenger, delivering God's warnings and promises to the people. He takes on the role of a spiritual guide, urging others to heed the messages he's received. It's not an easy task, as he faces skepticism and resistance, but he remains steadfast in his mission. In the Book of Enoch context, these prophecies and messages of judgment underscore the idea that there is a higher moral order and purpose to existence. Following this, Enoch could also foretell world-class events, some of which were highly catastrophic. A major prophecy in this category is that of the Great Flood. We find information about this in the Bible, where the massive flood was said to have covered the whole earth. This is seen in the book of Genesis, chapters 6 through 9. God decided to flood the earth because humanity had become corrupted, especially by the Nephilim. Amidst the chaos, only Noah and his family were alongside other animals. Noah was a righteous man and was chosen by God to build an ark. This ark was like a gigantic floating zoo and was designed to save Noah, his family, and two of every kind of animal from the flood. Once it was built, it started raining. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The waters covered the entire earth, even the mountains and all life outside the ark was wiped out. As epic as this event sounds, it beats our imagination even to know that Enoch had seen this before, and this was just one out of many other things he prophesied about. How did the Book of Enoch come about, and where does it meet other religions? The origins and development of the Book of Enoch are complex and debated among scholars, but here's a general overview of its formation. The core of the Book of Enoch, known as the Book of the Watchers, spanning chapters 1 to 36, was said to have originated in Jewish circles during the Second Temple period, which spans from the 5th century BCE to the 1st century CE. This section contains visions and teachings attributed to Enoch and describes the fallen angels known as the Watchers. The Book of Enoch is not the work of a single author, but appears to be a composite text with contributions from different authors and editors over time. Scholars believe it underwent several revisions and additions, resulting in multiple sections or books within the larger work. The book is categorized as apocalyptic literature, a genre popular during the Second Temple period, sharing thematic elements with other Jewish apocalyptic texts, such as the expectation of divine judgment, visions of heaven and angels, and the unveiling of esoteric knowledge. Several versions and fragments of the Book of Enoch have been discovered in various languages, including Ge'ez, Ethiopian, Aramaic, and Greek, with the most well-known version being the Ethiopian Enoch, or One Enoch, which contains several books beyond the Book of the Watchers. The acceptance of the Book of Enoch varied among Jewish and Christian communities, with some early Christians finding it influential and citing it in their writings. However, most Jewish and Christian authorities did not consider it part of the canonical scriptures. Later, the Book of Enoch fell into obscurity for centuries, 
but was rediscovered in the Western world during the 18th century, generating renewed interest among scholars and theologians. But how did other religions react to the book? Now, while the Book of Enoch isn't part of the canonical Bible, it is considered part of the broader religious and literary tradition. Hence, other cultural and mythological contexts also refer to Enoch, including ancient Mesopotamian texts and the Ethiopian tradition. As it turns out, the Book of Enoch and its related themes and concepts sometimes intersect with various religious and cultural traditions outside of Judaism and Christianity, and here are a few points of intersection. First, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, also known as the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, have a unique tradition of including the Book of Enoch, specifically the Ethiopian Enoch, or One Enoch, in their biblical canon. This inclusion sets them apart from other Christian denominations. It reflects the influence of the Book of Enoch on their religious tradition. In Islamic tradition, the Book of Enoch and the story of Enoch are not explicitly mentioned in the Quran. However, some connections and parallels exist between Enochic traditions and certain Islamic beliefs. For example, the Quran mentions the concept of righteous individuals who walked with God, and some Islamic traditions discuss the idea of prophets who were taken to the heavens, mirroring elements of Enoch's story. The Judeo-Christian tradition, which includes the stories and figures from the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, has significantly impacted the development of other religions. Thus, aspects of Anakic literature and themes, such as angels and apocalyptic visions, have influenced the beliefs and imagery of various religious and mystical traditions. The Book of Enoch and Anakic literature have also developed certain esoteric and mystical traditions. In Western esotericism, for example, Anakic writings have been studied and incorporated into the beliefs of groups like the Rosicrucians, and some branches of Freemasonry. For scholars of comparative religion who often explore the commonalities and differences between religious traditions, studying Enochic traditions can provide insights into the cross-cultural exchange of religious ideas and the development of religious thought. It's important to note that these intersections are complex and multifaceted. The influence of the Book of Enoch and Enochic traditions on other religions is not uniform and it varies depending on the specific religious context and historical period. Additionally, the interpretations and significance of Enochic texts can differ widely among religious and scholarly communities. But why was the Book of Enoch banned from the Bible? The answer to this question is not so straightforward. However, it is believed that the attribution to Enoch, only briefly mentioned in Genesis, was insufficient to grant it canonical status. Again, we must recall that the Book of Enoch is a composite work with contributions from different authors and editors over time. Its origins dating back to the Second Temple period make it a relatively late addition to Jewish literature. Hence, its late date and uncertain authorship influenced its exclusion from the canon. It is also believed that the Book of Enoch contains teachings and narratives distinct from the canonical book's content. Its inclusion of elaborate descriptions of angels, cosmology, and apocalyptic visions are found by some Jewish and Christian authorities to be speculative and inconsistent with their theological teachings, hence the exclusion. Some elements of the Book of Enoch resemble concepts and narratives in other religious traditions, such as Babylonian and Persian cosmology. Thus, this raised concerns about the book's syncretism with non-Jewish beliefs, Ultimately, the book was not universally accepted by Jewish or Christian communities. While some early Christians found it influential and quoted from it, most early Christian councils and Jewish authorities did not consider it canonical. Finally, determining which texts should be included in the biblical canon involves criteria such as apostolic or prophetic authorship, agreement with established doctrine, and acceptance by the broader religious community. The Book of Enoch did not meet these criteria in the eyes of many religious leaders and scholars, leading to its exclusion. It's essential to understand that the process of canonization was not uniform across different religious communities and periods. Various groups and denominations had different criteria and debates about which texts should be considered authoritative and included in their respective canons. As a result, some texts, like the Book of Enoch, were excluded from the canonical Bible, but retained significance in certain religious traditions or scholarly contexts. 
Do you think the Book of Enoch should be included in the Bible? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.